So what is going on guys, this is Taste, I'm bringing you another episode of How to GB, I think this is episode 10, and you had the last episode a little earlier than I wanted you to have in comparison to this one, which I'm sorry about, I'm also sorry about the fact that it's captured the flag on bootleg again, but it's what the ladder keeps giving us, it's the same 4v4 team, me, Simo, Maxi and Wrestler's Command, or AMD Guru, and you'll see I'm pushing through the middle here with someone. We've got one on the brick side, one on the road side, and you'll see this guy comes out here while I'm drawing the flash. So I'll quickly nip behind this wall to put him off guard, and then pop back out at a time that I don't think he's going to quite predict me to come out at, so that I can win that gunfight a little bit better. You'll see I'm very red. Had I just shot him when I saw him, not only would I likely have flashed myself, as well as scuppered my chances in that gunfight, it did allow him to be thrown off guard. And you'll see I come through here after I hear wrestlers shooting someone on the other side, pushing the flag, so that I can take out the people that are going to try and flank him there. And I do get the nice little two-piece there, which is letting bring the flag through. And now what you'll see us do is a tactic that you didn't see in the 3v3, but you will see in the 4v4, which is I'm going to wait there, and you'll have seen there was someone going across the top at the brick side. It was Simo there. And it was a little rotation system that we've got going with what's happening. You'll have someone sort of in a more defensive position, and as the flag is taken, he will move to go back to where the enemy flag should be, as the other person comes through the middle with the flag, while one person waits at their flag, and one person supports the flag carrier. That way, it allows for you to be able to quickly pick up the relay, which you'll see we did get, and then we get two flag caps instead of one. And I don't know how I didn't see that person there with his little head on there, and I probably should have dropped when I did see him. But now that I'm dead, I'm calling out Simo to see what I can see on his screen as I'm watching, because that's where I died. And I find that it's important that I told him there that there was two people, and that may have made a difference, it may not have done, but I think it's important that that happens, as obviously if two of us should have known something, and we still manage to die because we don't know it, then it's causing a big problem. And you'll see we managed to pull the flag again here. And I'm going to come out because I see there's a lot of people dying. And I do see that guy there. I don't know if he died or not, but I think he did judge it by the UAV. But what me and I think it was Maxi did there was a little switch over move with the flag, which is really important in team base with the capture of the flag if you can do that. Is when you run away with the flag and you've seen a person, you call out that you're being chased, and then another teammate will go back exactly where you've just come from. So then if you are being chased, the person comes out and all of a sudden instead of finding someone with the flag running away from them, they're in the much worse situation where they've got a different person who's going to be full health, which you may not necessarily have been, and they're going to be facing them, expecting them, and they're going to work out that, um, and what's going to happen is they're not going to be in the situation they wanted to be, and even if your teammate dies, they've slowed this person down and you've managed to get away with the flag, and as a team you will still could probably get that cap, as you'll see we have now got three flag caps there. So this game's going really well for us, and I'm going to push this roadside. I should have looked in middle here and really shouldn't be coming out of this gunfight. That was definitely a situation where I should have carried on going. And you'll see they have picked up the flag, but Restless is straight on it. He tries to get the return, but it doesn't happen. And I think this is Simo in his last live here, so he's just going to try and suppress them down. We do spawn right on him, and I'm just going to push straight down the road. There's no point me chasing after the flag, despite the fact it's right next to me. I need to go for the cutoff. You'll see Max is coming as well. I think that's Restless a bit behind us. Simo gets taken out, so there's still a flag carry going, and we get stunned. So I'm just going to wait behind this box. Max is just on the other side of me. You'll see the nade comes out. He comes in to take him, and I hope that even if Maxi dies, I can finish him off. But he does get a nice little two-piece on me and you'll see what happens there is Restless takes out that guy on the floor but thinks it's the flag carrier about to kill over dead but he doesn't and we accidentally lose the cap but that shouldn't matter you'll see I'm spawning right in a gunfight classic infinity ward stuff there but never mind we do manage to pull it off alright and we're just going to hold the flag for a few seconds while we've got this escort in the other flag through as you can see he's got into this little courtyard area which is a really dangerous place to be but it can pull off pretty well on this side if you pull the flag road because of the way the spawns work which is, if you're on the side that we're currently defending, you will spawn roughly on the flag. Um, what tends to happen is it's really difficult to spawn right at the back. What normally happens is, if they're sort of on the flag, you'll either spawn towards in the laundry room or in Tattoo, which is now behind me. Um, whereas on the other side, it's really difficult. You'll normally spawn at the normally advanced position. It's really difficult to make the team spawn on their flag. If you are spawning right on their flag, it tends to be that the other people are right on your flag as well, otherwise you do tend to spawn sort of mid-map area, which gives a slight advantage on that side, but it doesn't really matter too much. And you'll see that I'm throwing my flashes there, that's something I don't see people doing importantly enough, is to bounce flashes off walls and things like that. You'll see without moving my aim particularly well, I managed to stun the front area of the road there, the middle of the map, and managed to nade in there. And what I'm doing right now is there's only 30 seconds left and we've been taking quite some heavy fire over near our flag. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the flag and I'm just going to run down this road because it's a fairly safe place to go. It's where I came from. You see I do get shot here but I'm not going to be too bothered. I'm not even going for the flag cap here. What I'm doing is I'm making it so that their team has to separate. They have to send at least one but they normally send two people to come and get the flag off me. 
which takes pressure off my teammates trying to defend the flag and it also means it split their team up, they're not doing what they really want to be doing and therefore it's a lot more difficult because what they've got to do is they've got to find me, they've got to kill me, they've got to return the flag and then they've still got to run the flag back which has been defended by three of us which is a lot harder to do if they don't have their full team attacking it and you'll see Resus there is trying desperately to keep his pistol kill in the final kill cam but does get picked up so now we're spawning on this side and the spawn that we've got right now at the start is probably the only time we're ever going to spawn there I think what happens quite a few times is we spawn just in that alley there or out on this road um, so I'm going to take road, which is normally it's suicidal on this side, especially with an SMG. But you'll see I'm just going to watch middle and I try and shoot this guy down, but I only get some hit markers. I'm just going to sort of pretend that never happened. There's two down in the middle, chasing them would be stupid. There's blatantly going to be people in there. So I'll just wait around this area. I see the guy coming in road to call it out to whoever's spawn in there. We get some spawns on road and they pick the flag up. I'm just going to take these people out in the middle. This is the flag support that they've got going. One of them will be going to support the flag carrier. The other one will be taking their position from the defensive side like we did last time. But if you manage to pick them up in the middle and not go chasing straight after the big kill sign, you do a lot better. And when I'm coming up here, I read the spawns would probably be in tattoo, but I got a little bit wrong. They were in laundry on the other side, so I sort of paid for that judging mistake there. So I'm going to spawn on this plant side here, which means they're taking a push down road. And I already know that there's someone over at Bricks. So... What I'm doing is I'm just sort of moving around and he gets pushed up and he does get taken out. So I come over here to try and clean up after what happened there. And I'm not going to push too far in too fast. So I'm going to throw my son and come forward. I'm picking guys off. And after that, Restless decides it's a good idea to try and pull for the flag. But there's another guy at the back there. And I think I can have him because we've taken a few people down. But he's got better cover than me and he throws a nade. And I think there was an extra person there that I didn't realise as well. Which is probably going to slow down what Simo's doing here. He's just pushing up sort of gently along this roadside. And he took a guy out on the way, and he's just trying to make sure that he doesn't get in too much of a bad position where they can get behind him while we spawn in. And me and Restless are going to take a two-man push on this side. Two-man pushes are really good. If I'd managed to get a bit more accuracy there, we'd probably have done a lot better just after this. But unfortunately, I do let him die, and I get confused by that box being there. I don't really know why, but simple things manage to confuse me sometimes. I just sort of got up there and looked, and there's a box in the way of my vision. I didn't. Know. I was thinking about how to move the box without giving away my position, but someone just crept up behind me while I was doing more thinking than it's really safe for me to be doing. So I'm just going to push up this roadside here and you'll see someone gets taken out. So I'm expecting that head glitch, but rest is calls out that he moved back behind the box. So I'm just going to check this middle area. I see Maxi coming through there, which means it's safe. So I'm going to push straight forward down this roadside. And I know that they like to use this market for cover. So I'm going to come up here and take out the people that are in the market while we try and pull the flag. But there's someone in the laundry and I think I get taken out by someone who may have just spawned in the tattoo there because we were pushing that side but you'll see Simo's going to hold a position over at this brick side this is the sort of line that we had when it was 3v3 and it's good to be able to hold that line still with sort of a 3v3 situation and then there'll be one person on each team trying to run the flags trying to get into areas where the team are trying to hold out and things like that so I'm going to push this bricks there, and I'm trying to see if I can get a nice little cover spot on that ledge there that there's there, but it doesn't happen and then I get taken out because there's too many people and I didn't realise I accidentally pressed sprint but you'll see we're sort of taking control of the road side of the map, which isn't good because when it's on that side it's a lot safer. The road sort of hits best for these other people and there's that courtyard circle area at the end which is really dangerous to be going to if you're on the side that we're on. So it's a lot easier to try and pull the brick side so we need to try and keep control of that but we don't want them to have road dominance because that's the side that they want. So I spawn here in the crate and die straight away. So that's not really good at the moment. I'm not doing well at the time being. I think this is Maxi's here and he's just trying to stay alive. And Restless is trying to throw the nade onto the spawn there. I forgot he did that in this game. Um, what happens is if your team are all dead and you spawn first, if you throw a nade onto where you spawn, that friendly nade will push the spawn away because that spawn is no longer safe because of the friendly fire being on. It pushes the spawn away from that nade into somewhere else. It's exceptionally effective on dome. If you're spawning in the bunker and you're defending the flag in the main building on dome and you spawn in the bunker and you throw your grenade onto there, while the grenade's still there, all people that would spawn in that bunker will instead on your team spawn right on your defensive flag. And you'll see what happens here as I throw stuns through to stop the chase. And I see the spawn is happening over on this plant side, which means we've got bricks, which is what we want ideally. And I'm just going to run the flag straight through here. You'll see I've got mid support, and I think it was Maxi tried to go off and go for the relay. Restless dies over there. And this is what was a good play for flag carriers to do here is to try and indirectly get into your gunfights. You don't want to be there shooting the person getting shot. You want to try and just throw stuns or nades in there and let someone else deal with it. If the other person dies, it doesn't matter. You've still got the flag. But if you can throw the nade in there to try and help them out, you'll see I've got a kill with the nades and I've got two. 
kills, one of which I got an assist for. So what I'm going to do again is I'm going to stop him using this market for cover. I'll get a lucky little kill on that guy, turning on him. I managed to pull the flag again, and you'll see I've got strong support here. Rest of spawns over at the planting side on the other end. I call it the planting side because the search destroyed bomb is there, in case people are wondering what that call out's for. I think there's a different name that people I know in the NA have a different area for this, I think. But I'm just going to pull the flag straight down the brick side. As you can see, it's a really easy way to get through on this map. And we managed to get 2-0, which is what I've said from the start. is a good score to be having in rounds of CTF. It's very safe to have, although we won the first one 4-1, so we didn't really need it. I'm just going to push forward, see if I can claim a final kill cam. But I think I spray this guy down, and he manages to prone away. But that is the end of this episode of How to GB. So it took so long and the maps are getting repeated a lot. I'll try and get the other one out reasonably, uh, probably in a week to be honest, because I'm running out of GB gameplay because I've been busy with exams and stuff and I haven't really managed to be playing too many GBs and I've had the END YouTube stuff to do as well. But, but that is the end of this episode and I will see you around.